Welcome, Big J. Hey, buddy. It's hard to get you in in the morning. I know you don't like to get up. I don't blame you. It's yeah, we run we run so late, you know. Yeah. You know, I remember when you started uh, doing O and A years ago, and that was the switch. That was almost the first switch from the back table of everyone being out till like three in the morning, just talking shit at the back table. Of the cellar was when you got the gig here, and you had to start doing the earlier shows. Two thousand October of 04. because before that it was uh, it was an afternoon show, so it was okay to go home at like fucking five in the morning. It didn't matter. Yeah. But then once it went to mornings, that was it. Yeah, it was, I remember that schedule switch a lot. That's when it started. That's when that back table started breaking down. A little bit, yeah, because it just wasn't. There was one less person, and then somebody else gets something, and then there's two less people. And we were talking. To you the, were the glue that hold, held everybody. Well, together. Well, you know, I, jizz. Uh, uh, <laughs> welcome. Uh, we were talking about Stank, Skank Fest, and I didn't realize Ari Shafir was stealing all your announcements. You Every mean Ari Shafir Skank Fest? <laughs> Shafir Fest. <laughs> yeah, I've only heard great things. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's snagging every single uh, announcement from Lewis, which is driving Lewis nuts. It's got to be. Why does Why does Lewis just keep it quiet? Then why is he telling him? I'm not sure how. We're not even quite sure how he's finding out. Also, I think Ari's just announcing people that he wants <laughs> <laughs> as if they're already there. <laughs> so who do you have booked? I know I'm doing it, and who else? Uh, according to Ari Shafir, Steve yeah. renazizi has got something involved. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Does he? <laughs> I mean, according, Co- according to, Ari, to Ari, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure even what the other ones that are fully announced yet, but I mean, it's going to be an amazing. They got the new location at Brooklyn Bazaar, so we can go from booking, having only 300 tickets available to now 1,000 tickets we can do. So we've oh, already, that's nice. We, we sold out on pre-sale, I think, in 48 hours, and then on May 5th, the official uh, tickets go on sale. So we're hoping... Hoping it's something good. Oh, that's it's great. The third year. So what is it now? It, it's just a bunch of comics doing different shows at the same time or different times? Well, with this room, we have the ability to have two big shows going on at once. Okay. And if you have everybody kind of perform twice, everyone will get to see everything. But uh, this, the, we've did it historically. Yeah, it's like from noon on, we have like pod, live podcasts. And, and then at nighttime is when it ramps up. I mean, historically, we've had the naked comedy, the naked uh, roast battle. Is one of the most intense things I've ever seen. I suggest you hang in there for it. Make it roast. That's a great idea. I mean, uh, Allison Klemp last year pulled her jokes out of her pussy. That was the greatest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. She had a plastic bag and she <laughs> took it out of her snatch and fuck. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Did people laugh? At oh a girl yeah, pulling jokes out of her pussy. <laughs> yeah, the other girl had a, I mean, an extraordinary long tampon string hanging out. <laughs> oh. Zach Amico uh, cut himself. Uh, wrestling style, like sliced himself open, and then Ari Shafir. Are you bladed? Uh, yeah, and then Ari Shafir took a, a piss and a cup on stage and threw it on Zach. So fun like that. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, open? if you haven't gotten your tickets, everybody. <laughs> so did Ari Shafir's piss go into Zach's open wound? I'd have to assume it made its way in there somehow. <laughs> That's, uh... Was Zach upset? You know what's funny? If it was me, it's funny how your friends know what your limit is. I guess if that was, I don't think Ari would have done that to me because if. Any friend would have done that to me. I would have hit them and then immediately been over, but like you, that when you had- You have to punch somebody that, for that. Yeah, you threw piss on yeah. me in public. And you missed my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wasted, you wasted all that all. beautiful, beautiful <laughs> piss. Now, Jay, let's, let's address this, because this is Clint. I don't know why people think it. Yes, Clint in Illinois, what's up? Hey, Jimmy. Yes. Uh, I think, and I want to say hi to everybody. Crackle, crackle. Uh, I heard I I'm it's probably I want to say Bennington and you never know when he's just <laughs> screwing with people, but yes. I remember him several years ago making the comment. Uh, he was talking about both of you guys, and then all of a sudden he said, "I don't know why there can't be two heavy metal comics." <laughs> and he, it was just kind of a side, but I it was like it was a dig, and I always wondered. I'm like, well, Jay's not been on the show much. Uh, he never shows up when the skanks do, and I just started wondering if that was just a Ronnie B thing or if there was really well, some kind of rift between you guys. Jim used to always talk about it uh, on the show. Actually, we do a lot of it off air that he felt like Jay was taking his throne as the king of heavy metal. Yeah, comedians. I mean, that was my thing, the king of heavy metal. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of metal talk in my act. Exactly right. <laughs> Thanks, Clint. That's great that neither of us do that anymore. <laughs> hey, what's <laughs> yeah. up? I mean, since Lemmy died, I mean, it's an open air now, huh? <laughs> we <laughs> both like it, but but no, there's no rift. I don't know why people... Th- I've wanted you on the show, and it's hard to get you on because I, I'm taking it you're just up until 3 o'clock in the morning. Sure, sure. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, I find that very bizarre that that, that narrative has been created. 
I know. I, wish, I, I wish we those guys it. would just get along. So, I'm like, I've never had any problems. Did we push it? Of course we pushed it. But Whenever Jay wouldn't show up, if it were the oh, other Oh, he doesn't two, like us, yeah. If it were, if it was like, Lou, even oh, if it Lewis was just. Lewis and Dave came one time. I was yeah. supposed to come in. I couldn't right. come in. Yeah, yeah, And I think they came in another time, but it was just them booked. Like, they were promoting a comedy tour or something. And, and I definitely pushed forward that Jay said he did not want to come in. And he <laughs> I will not be here. He wouldn't come in. I don't come so. in that studio. Yeah. 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 Well, like, why won't he come in? I'm yeah. Not. No, I'm not confused as to why people. You were in on the. You were in on that day with uh, you were here when Ace Freely came in. You were here when uh, Patrice. Uh, it was hilarious. My two appearances ever on O and A were so I, I got completely usurped by uh, what was happening. Ace Freely happened to come in. It wasn't like a booking with the birthday cake. He was here. Yeah, he was here in the building. And they got him to come in. So I remember I ended up. <laughs> I sat here for a minute, and then they were like, Jay, we need you to kind of sit over there with a the microphone. So I was, who else was I, on the panel? I already didn't. I forget who else was here, but it was just enough people that, like, there was Wait no more thing. Oh, I, it was Anthony. I who forgot decided, Anthony. Who decided to give Ace Freely uh, precedence over you? Who would have put Ace Freely above? Uh, probably the world. Well, yeah. No, it, was, it was my birthday, and he brought in a cake with an ass with a log of shit sticking out of it. <laughs> right. And I bit the shit log out of the cake. I mean, it had to happen. You did. Yeah. And then when Patrice was here with Bobo at the Up and Down game. Yep. And down game, you yeah. That was that. that was such a great moment to be a, a part of. Isn't it weird? You look back, like I watched that moment, mm -hmm. and I, in the moment, it's just your dumb friend is laughing, but you don't realize like this is going to be one of the definitive things I remember about this person for the rest of my life. It's crazy. Like you don't realize it in that moment. It is. It really is insane. You know, people, it, it's it's a millions of YouTube hits. Uh, people fucking absolutely love it. I just wanted to go back to that. He gave you, why do you think you wanted the shit with the thing? Do you notoriously, I know the piss thing. Which is just, just to be, it's just silly, I guess. I just to be, uh, you know, plus chocolate's delicious. So <laughs> I guess I, I'm guessing that's why uh, they did that. I was, I was just looking for a friend. In, I was just casting a, a rope there for a friend in the world. I've gotten weirdly into watching no. hot girl shit porn. Oh, yeah. Jesus Have you? Christ I've seen day. it, but not, not in a masturbation, to, no, or I shouldn't say that. I sh not in a finishing masturbation yeah. tone, but I've definitely become intrigued by it. I don't know why. What are they shitting on? Is it the Brazilian stuff where they're shitting on each other, or is it ones where they're just dropping logs on the floor? The floor ones. Those um, are better. I, I, but I, very specifically, the American. I'm always just blown away that a a pretty 19, 20 year old girl is oh, willing Jesus to Christ. just shit in like a. Like someone was able to pay her enough money, I guess because I didn't, I wasn't very good getting laid at all through my teens, early twenties, even probably like the late twenties. With that stuff, that I'm intrigued that I was nervous to ask a girl that I thought was pretty if she wanted to hang out or do something, and yet somebody <laughs> was like, "Hey, I about three or four hundred bucks to take a shit in the sink." <laughs> <I'm> like, sure. <laughs> it is incredible the, the balls that these people have to ask these women to do something and the fact that they do it. Yeah, I, that's, what I, that, that's what gets me. Like a beautiful girl showing her face like, I'm getting ready to shit on camera and never have a job in the media yeah. of any sort. <laughs> like what do you do after this? Like what, what is it you do where you, you take a dump on camera oh. and, and then like what was your goal when it started and what does it become after that? That's a great point. Have um, you seen the Netflix documentary about the guys who get the, the I don't I forget what it's called it's the girls that get into porn? Oh the uh Hot Girls Wanted. Hot Girls, Hot Girls Wanted. Wanted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That really made me uh that actually turned me off more to the quote unquote amateur porn. Yeah. Because it does look like a just a draining. They make them all like kind of live in a dormitory situation with well, what some What do you think's going on with weird fucking... neck tattoo Russian guys watching oh. over them all the time? You think it's a little bit it's a little bit nicer with the shit porn people? <laughs> I wonder if that's more voluntary. I don't know. I don't think shit porn involves you having to live in a dormitory for Yeah. <laughs> exactly. At least you know they... the bathroom is always free. <laughs> <Were> they... <laughs> 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 Is uh is Stacy in there? Oh, she, well, she's probably just peeing or doing her makeup. <laughs> <laughs> do not waste, do not waste that beautiful shit log. <laughs> yeah, there is something. Uh, there is something amazing about an American. I don't know why. Amer maybe because I, I always like the language. Like when you can communicate with somebody, it turns me on more. Sure, and they can tell me. But we also know how much opportunity there is here, theoretically, yeah. in America, to sure. do other things that aren't shitting on camera. Yeah, so yeah. the fact that that's the choice that would be made is the intriguing thing. No, right? that's the amazing choice. No, that is the opportunity. My God, I can pay my rent shitting on camera. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Well, it's, I brought it up on stage in, in Cleveland, and there was How hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was a, the steamer. They, uh, I asked a, I, I told a girl in the audience, like pretty younger girls, about, and I was like, "You have a price. To, like, what would be the price, honestly, to 
to just shit on camera. You don't have to do anything sexual with anybody. You said it'd be fully naked. They show your face, and then you take a hot shit on camera. And, you know, the young girl, of course, always. I mean, that would have to start at, like, $50 million. And then someone else goes, uh, I bet she'd do it for $1 million. And then, of course, a realistic, pretty 30-something-year-old went, thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I went, thousand. We could probably get that up. And she goes, I go, just a thousand, huh? And she goes, I mean, I'm shitting anyway. <laughs> which was, which is, you just got to find that personality in the world, I guess. Who's right. got that attitude about it. But right. does it ever come without damage? I doubt it. I doubt it. If you shit on camera, by the way, I don't think if you shit on camera for uh, someone's personal catalog, it, it seems way less. If someone's like shit on of camera, course, that doesn't... where there's going to be a, a dot com, you know, watermark at the bottom, seems like, yeah, you're putting that out there in the world, like, fuck everybody. Yeah. If you're doing it for someone personally, it's different because it's private and it's a dirty thing. But it seems, yeah, if you are doing it on camera and going, yep, this is out there. You guys, I wanted to ask you too, because you and Dan do uh, Bonfire, mm -hmm. and I heard your uh, thing with Yamanika. With, with oh, Stanhope. Stan we had Stanhope that morning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Doug's always a little, whenever he comes in, he's always a little, it's always a little bit of the night before bleeding in. Sure. But by the time you guys got him. I mean, he was also literally drinking travel size bottle of liquor. Travel yeah. Travel size bottles yeah. of liquor as he was sitting. Yeah, he, he was yeah. A, bit, a bit tipsy. Yeah. He gave me the warning when I said, because uh, I just found out he was in town. So I was like, hey, come on in and uh, and do the show for you. He's like, yeah, sure. He goes, but I warn you, I'm cruise ship drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and he came in and he, uh, in fact, was. I, I said it was funny. <laughs> ship it's amazing drunk. how sycophantic his fans get sometimes because so many of them started tweeting at me on social media like, you didn't defend Doug enough. You lost a fan today. Wow. Like, fuck, you, you put your, you know, you bet on the wrong horse, you piece of shit. And people get so angry but at Doug it. But Doug doesn't need defending. Doug can handle himself. He didn't need defending at all. And uh, and I don't think Yamanika necessarily needed defending. What happened, it was, an all, uh, look, I'm new enough at, especially running a radio show, that I didn't really quite know how to jump, you know, it was very uncomfortable, even though I knew if something happened. Because Soder said on the way up, when we had Doug coming in, he goes, you know, Yamanika's coming in today, too. And I go, yeah. He goes, you think they're going to get along? And I said, I, they should. I yeah. mean, like, we're going to be talking about, we have topics to talk to them about, so maybe they'll disagree on that stuff. I never quite saw it just going the way it went. But I did tell Soder, I'm like, and if not, you know, great radio, I guess. It is interesting. When when people are getting into it, it it's like, it's hard to step in because it's like, I know it's fun to listen to. It's Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, you had the awkwardness we, I was saying before with Dave. Landau and uh, I was like Kevin Brennan and Kevin Brennan. Like, I mean, what we, do you do? We literally booked the awkwardness, though. No, yeah. of course, you know what I mean. Like we know no, exactly yeah. what we Absolutely. were doing. Absolutely, but I mean, to not thinking it's going to get into. I mean, you see, no, Kevin and Dave, neither would... of you think someone's going to stand up at one point. Yeah, right. you, and that you can't have just because then you know then they won't be allowed in the building. And I love Kevin, so I don't want to see him getting you know. Oh, yeah, he's great. When it starts to drift towards assault, <laughs> we're like, okay, <laughs> no, let's 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 pull let's pull the line here because that yeah that'll go very very bad, but. Yamanika, I mean, I just, people got angry that I said, I just understand her point. I think she, maybe that could have went differently or anything. What was her I, point? I, I didn't hear you say that. Her point, uh, I understand where she was coming from, was that she was, as soon as she walked in, uh, Doug just makes, her, her first stepping into the room, Doug goes, oh, great. He goes, another black person's in the room. Bingo gets nervous. Then by chance, Bingo was simply just, she was sitting at the console with us. She simply moved so Yamanika could sit down. Right. Like, so she but it to seemed like. So when she, she says that and then Bingo moves so she could sit down. And then also when Bingo moves, our producer, Jacob, moves over to that seat. So it didn't even read that she was actually getting up to let her sit down. Right. Oh, she's just walking It just away. looks like she was uncomfortable with a black, black person. Black person, okay. Then within two minutes after that, Doug asks Yamanika if she's really a woman because he's been fooled before. <laughs> so now he's called her a man. <laughs> <laughs> he's also, as we uh, previously established, cruise ship drunk. Cruise ship drunk. So it's slurry, it's, uh, yeah. but hilarious nonetheless. Sure. And Yamanika is not quite sure what to make of it. And then he, uh, he goes, which is hilarious, he tries to introduce us, I believe, uh, that everyone kind of agrees that he was introducing a, a pretty interesting subject of which you would have needed to ask a girl, which could have been Christine right. or Yamanika, but Yamanika's right across from him and he's going to ask, has a man ever regretted having sex with you the next morning? I guess in relation, he's going to yeah. get into the Me Too thing, like how about a guy who sure. feels that way? He goes, has anyone ever regretted having sex with you the next morning? And Yamanika skeptically goes, uh, uh, no, no one's ever 
regretted fucking me the next morning. And then Stan Hope says exactly like this. He goes, well, then you are unaware. <laughs> so, like, so now in her mind, I understand for the fourth time now on the day, she's been called fat and ugly by this guy. Okay. And I think she just went on and started. Now, here's the thing. She started tearing into it and did say funny things. She said he was wearing a Mr. Furley suit and I think made fun of something like saying Bingo probably regrets fucking him every day. And they went back and forth and it just got awkward and heated and then the funniest part to me is you could hear me and dan both scurrying ah. <laughs> just going like hey come on ah. <laughs> do a lot of game show host voice we could, come on ah. what a good time here <laughs> yeah well, you know you both you both been to detroit and done gigs <laughs> <laughs> trying to find a common ground <laughs> hey you guys have both been on the television before and uh and doug walked out his last words were hilarious he goes big j fix this <laughs> <laughs> and then he went and did the show and, and we uh, talked right afterwards and he's fine and he was thanking us for being on the show and it, it was it was great radio what about I Yamanika? Yama, I th Yamanika uh she came back on the show the next day and was uh seemed fine with it but I heard that she did end up going on like Tuesdays with stories and getting like a little teary and bummed out because teary, teary. And, well I get you know she probably shouldn't have said that because I think it just opens up the floodgates sometimes but you know Yamanika is a tough chick but I understand as much as anybody when you have a couple every day there's something negative on social media yeah of course but, but it's usually bookended by like love the show this was hilarious yeah. blah 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 it is and then it's like you fucking suck you know that's fat, what we get more blah, blah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah we get the middle part yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, that, that all rains down but for a couple of days myself included you're gonna get it's just the people stirring up the hate oh, dude yeah. and at very best you get people like half defending you because they don't want to get they don't want to turn on them either it goes look it wasn't the best thing he could have done but he did what he could yeah. i suppose is like the best defense you're gonna get and everybody else just goes so i think it probably got to her after a while oh, the they, beach, they, were going, sure. they couldn't have went more racist and you i'm know, surprised aggressive with on twitter yeah. i'm surprised it's weird <laughs> yeah on a twitter when your picture is a picture of an egg <laughs> <laughs> yeah you do get that like when you're on the shit end of it for whatever reason you said something you like or you do a segment or you, or you, you, you were pro trump against trump whatever the fuck you said something and they just it's just one of those things they're looking at you like get them piece yeah, of shit absolutely. get them yeah yeah, and you're in the barrel for a few days, and it is what it is. And then it does, it really does just go away. It goes away. It all goes away. It's funny, we have this picture, uh, Hot Girls Wanted up here. Um, that's the guy, that's the guy who has the house. Right. With all those girls just live there. Why? When they were all done, because they, they get to live there for free, technically, but, yeah. he, but he controls their money. So oh, the, that's the amateur porn thing? Yeah, yes. oh. the girl who ended up quitting at the end of it and going back to her boyfriend quit because she said, I was here for, it was like eight months or something, and she cleared... She only made twenty five grand and spent, you know, most of that because she had to, while she was out there living in Miami, in that world. So it is crazy. I think that's too for me. Why I've never been a strip club guy as an adult, or even a, a, a hookers guy as much, is because working when I used to drive strippers and escorts to bachelor parties and stuff, and I had that job when I was right. younger. You just when you're on the ride home. But well, that's why I'm surprised this guy like loves this job so much, having these girls stay in his house. You see the sadness of it. You get the story. Oh. If you're in a car car ride with a stripper who just, you know, had guys bite twenties out of her snatch for an hour, <laughs> that's when you start getting like the. Well, I'm just trying to get my kids back from social services. Oh. And, like they're always trying guy, to justify. Yeah, those seven guys who fucked me, like they were a little mean and raw. You know, everything you're just like, ah. Yeah, you see the human side of it. Yeah, it just makes you feel like, oh, they're not into this, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this girl didn't want to fuck 14 random strangers. <laughs> so you yeah, can't, but so you, you don't really go to strip clubs anymore? No, I mean, if, if everyone's going, as like, if I get like the goof of going, if you're going with a group of guys to kind of like have a laugh or whatever, but like to go and really have any, I've, I've never felt the confidence that I could pull a stripper ever. I never. I've only seen one person ever do it weirdly, David Tell. It's insane. And it's amazing. When I went on the Insomniac tour with him in Philly, he liked this girl. The girl wanted to leave. The boss said he could leave with her. It was pretty hilarious. Wow, so he pulled a stripper <laughs> and she left. Yeah, and she was so hot. Yeah, it was crazy. But I've never, even with SDR show that we do, which you've done before, Jim, is uh, we have porn stars on all the time. They make a lot of, I'm going to come fuck you and Christine tonight promises. Oh, God, yeah. And then nothing. <laughs> nothing. We just had Ralph Sutton on. Uh, yeah. The Chip Podcast. Yeah, I like Ralph. You know what's hilarious, too, with that is they, they say they're going to do that they said, they're like, oh, yeah, let's get out of here. I think we would have hooked up with some of these porn stars had I had more self-confidence because what I always do, I rarely do Monday nights at the stand anymore. They have that frantic show that just kind of runs. And 
if I pop in, I can go on. And I, I don't ever do it just because of my schedule. Right. But any time a stripper or a, a, a porn star would be like, yeah, I'll hang out with you and Christine after the show. Let's hang out. I'll go back to your place. I'm still like, well, I got to go to the... St- I want her to see me do comedy first. To oh. feel, because I don't want to feel like she's fucking me for like the stunt. I want her to feel like, oh, this guy does have something You want to validate on. yourself in her <laughs> eyes. Like, wow, this guy is the shit. And Ralph's pointed out, he goes, I've lost probably eight of them just from... Because by the time they get we're done the stand, they're like hammered. And then we're like, me and Christine got to be like, I guess we're going to put you in a cab. You know, your nose is running. Yeah, instead of just taking her home, going out for a drink and then taking her home. Can't, yeah. I have to let her, I have to believe in my mind there's some reason, like, now this girl wants to fuck me. Right. (laughs) What was the big, do you ever get jealous in threesomes? Like, you do, it's just you, her, and a girl. Mm -hmm. And is there any, does she ever get jealous or is there any uncomfortable moments? Never in the actual fucking part of it, but sure, yeah, afterwards, if it. What's got what's gone wrong after? It's that fine line of, you know, we fuck. <clears throat> there's a couple that we like hook up with regularly. You know, a couple of girls that are regular. It's not easy to find new ones all the time, but in the few that we, regularly, it's to be, how many times do I ask is a big deal. Oh, if you're pushing it, you know what I mean. Oh. Even even worse if I if I do, uh, hey, let's. Uh, Maybe this week we'll hook up with a chick or something. If it gets specific, like, hey, why don't we call that one? Uh, I think that one. Or if it's like I've had the communication, sometimes oh can be weird, which happens. And she's usually not a big deal, but it's just like if I have specifics, you know, well, you know, she's working that night till 3 a.m., so we can't that night. But Thursday, she's free and clear, but she's visiting her parents on Saturday. Yeah. She's like, why the fuck do you have on the yeah, How do you know this? Yeah. Like, I, we did go back and forth probably too much. Yeah, yeah you got to. Uh, and, and do you have like, like, she could just look at your phone at the conversation if she wants to? Uh, she could. I don't ever go through her. So I, I hate that so much. I'm so, I'm skittish about anyone holding my phone. Fi- Lewis points it out all the time. Lewis J. Gomez, if, if I'm showing him like, you know, a video yep. of something or a YouTube video and he t- puts his hands on my phone, I grip my phone even harder. I'm yeah. like, I don't know why. I'm just, you know what it is? I got caught cheating so bad in 2000, shit, I was like maybe 2006 or seven, so bad. And it was just from How'd you my get phone caught? going through. I used to put my uh, I used to put my phone at night with my ex-wife. I used to turn it off and put it in my pillowcase. Is how much I really just wanted it not. See. And yeah. my and my ex-wife even knew I put it in my pillowcase. I forget what the reason I gave was like, yeah, I just don't want to be bothered. You know, I need to sleep in the morning. I don't want this yeah. bothering so me. So putting it in my pillowcase. So I'm putting it in totally my pillowcase. Totally makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And uh, and then one day I was seeing another girl. And I had put, that night, me and the other girl had had an argument because what she did was I was showing her something in my phone and she happened to see that her name in my phone was uh, Jason, I think it was under Jason Steinberg, our (laughs) old manager. (laughs) That's how little he actually called me. (laughs) I was more of an Evan Steinberg guy. And uh, I had, and she was like, why would you have my name in there like that you know if i'm your girlfriend right and i was uh, i forget whatever bullshit excuse i gave it she half bought but we argued pretty big about it and then as like a thing i'm like what do you think i'm hiding this is so i don't know what you think i'm hiding i go look up and i put it in as her first name my last name like just to be like almost like funny about it and went to bed that night pretty late Uh. in the night she was texting me still you know we're, we're going back and forth and i put the phone uh i think i put it in though i whatever it was i just kind of passed out and didn't think about my phone and in the morning she started calling a bunch and my ex-wife just answered the phone and they had an hour and a half phone call before, while i was still asleep oh just no vi- visions of sugar plums oh. <laughs> so, when, so when your phone rings her name comes up with your last name. Yes. Oh. So she's seen that oh. and wondering like, oh, some cousin I've never met? Yeah. And they get on the phone and they talk for an hour and a half. And then she woke me up with a, she was in law school at the time with a law book to the face. And then it was just hostile and awful at that oh point Oh my God. Yeah, at what brutal. point? That's a terrible thing because you know, how long did you try to lie for? Um... When he got caught? Like yeah, in the like when you first wake up, how, how long do you try to like, no, uh, she's lying. Or... I, I didn't even get to that because it was just too, it was too deep at that point. But I did 
do way longer than I was confused about what was going on, played the confused role. Oh. <laughs> You're sitting there, she goes, and this girl, you know, Lauren, blah, 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 blah. And she's going, and I just kept going like, well, I don't, wait, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Hey, 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 hey. Hoping she'll Ooh. go, you don't know what I'm talking about? You go, no, I don't. I go, I, this is not, this, did I grab someone else's phone? <laughs> So then you finally realize I'm completely busted. Oh, yeah. I got kicked in the nuts by both of them on separate occasions. Did um, the other girl, did you ever fuck the other girl again? No. Oh, she was dumb, yeah. No, no. I went over there one time just kind of like be apologetic. Because again, it's one of those things when you're living it, you don't realize how fucked up you're yeah, being. Yeah, yeah. At all. And then when it points it out, like everyone's just sad around you. My daughter was a pretty young baby still. I just fucked that. I'm like, what's my life going to do? Then I had to go to South Africa for three weeks, like four days later, which ended up being... For the best. Yeah. Because you get away from the world. And that's when the story I just told on Ari Shafir's, uh, this is not happening, the last season, I just told the story of that girl, the side girl, took a naked picture she had of me that I forgot. That was like a joke picture even. Yeah. Because there's never been a picture of me naked where I'd be like, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, play was, with yourself to this. It was a fucking joke. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then she put it on Craigslist while I was in South Africa for the men looking for men. <laughs> <laughs> Which was pretty great. Wayne, <laughs> Wayne Rada is the guy, the person who found it in an actual, like, you know, Craigslist. Is dick he gay? Hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Wayne, you remember Wayne who used to run? Yeah, I know he was uh, He, uh, and yeah, he absolutely, uh, he found it and gave me the heads up. And then he told everybody to, Patrice included, to flag it because this was not something that I wanted up there. Uh -huh. And Patrice made that his, uh, Screensaver. On his <laughs> we went there on a Thanksgiving one time, and he told me to push the mouse on his computer. And it was you naked. And I pushed it. And it was just a picture of me naked. And he just laughed at me for fifteen minutes. That's really funny. Yeah. So she's all right. So you got busted, and you, it's undeniable at that point. Sometimes when you're so caught, it's almost a, a relief to be so one hundred percent caught because you realize I don't have to think of a lie, like. And I'm especially done. when somebody else is given all the details. Dude, i yeah. So you're not even responsible for painting this picture. It's you like, just, yeah, you, you, you just got to do out. a lot of sobby head nods. Mm -hmm. And did you really blah, blah, blah with this yep. girl? You go, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I need help. I'm sick. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm an man. addict. <laughs> it really, I mean, I wonder sometimes if that's even like a decent uh, argument. Like, I don't know, because it seems to put that stress on your shoulders just seems very, very bizarre. What was funny was I was starting to get out of that chick. Anyway, I was very into her, and I believe it's because, you know, again, fat guy my whole life, she was like a really skinny girl, yeah. pretty, uh, and I was very excited that she seemed so into fucking me, and then I remember I was with Patrice on the road somewhere, and I wanted to brag to him about how, uh, you know, this pretty girl, I'm he's like, let me see, and I had a picture of her, the same day that I took the, the, she took the naked picture of me, I had a picture of her. She just opened her towel, and she was really thin. Yeah. A really thin chick with like very small tits. And I opened up, and he just goes, that bitch looks like Buffalo Bob from Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at that, that picture. Just, it's almost like the Buffalo picture. Buffalo Bill. Cha yeah, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> it looks like the fucking, like the picture almost changed for me when he said that. Yes. I go, You're right. This isn't sexy. This looks like a boy. <laughs> Buffalo like a, Bill. Like a young boy. <laughs> this looks like a young boy opening his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It looked like that, and I was like, damn it. The that funny was... part, too, is what a piece of shit thing to say to a guy who's showing you a girl. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> bragging. It just try, ruins it. And try yeah. to go, hey, Patrice, you're a big guy too. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> That's all I wanted. <laughs> he was like, ugh. You do look good, by the way. You look like you've dropped a lot of weight. I'm trying, man. I got to, uh, I'm doing a Netflix half hour. They're doing dirty half hours. Oh, nice. Uh, in June. Dirty so or 30? Dirty. They're oh, doing that's the great. half hours, but they're doing like a, like a round of them that are like. Oh, dirty. Like dirty, uh, dirty comedy. So I'm doing that. And I have two months, so I'm doing some, just a goofy diet. Oh, good, good, good. You what feel kind of good? Diet? Right? It's it's essentially brown rice, grilled chicken, and vegetables daytime, and then fish and vegetables at night. No dairy, no red meat. Yeah. And Do you it, like it? Uh, eating like that? Yeah. I like the benefits of it. Aside from dropping weight at all, I like the not like it's, it's amazing how every time I eat, I eat until it hurts sort of here. Yeah. Even if it's not unhealthy food, it just kind of eat until it goes. So I do kind of like not. I've never been able to eat between shows on the road before. And now I can because it doesn't feel like I ate when I'm done. 
Yeah. A piece of salmon and broccoli doesn't lay heavy when you're <laughs> no, not when all. you're on stage like, you know, a T bone steak and smashed potatoes or whatever. Hey, what happened to your you had me do your I loved your crowd work show. It was like it was, it was original and it was fun and you're great at it. And why did that all of a sudden did they did, did, did the network go? Uh, the CISO went under. CISO, oh, okay. CISO went under. So we're shopping it around with uh, Comedy Central and a couple other places, hoping that it gets picked up again. Because it was so fun. Yeah, it's great to get comics to do it. No one feels like they're burning material. Yeah, it's, it's easy to get comics to do something with, all right, I'll just go and fuck around. And it's, it's not, and they're going to edit the 12 minutes down to the best five. And right. It's, it's, it was, yeah, it was going great. And then that whole network just ate shit. What happened to them? Did they just... Uh... They go away. We own the name and, and they're for sale. So who, wherever it goes... I, I think they'd like to try to hopefully buy the catalog too, so you can just air the ones we already have. Doesn't that suck though? Like you get something and people like it, and then there's beyond your control the network or, or the the site. It, they have financial problems. There's shit you can do about it. It really well. Everyone tries to now get their own. It's crazy how many subscription things you have to get if you want. Yeah. Them all. Like CBS has a subscription, like its own mm-hmm. Netflix too. Because I saw a trailer today for a show that's coming out on CBS only like their streaming service, which is bizarre. Well, the networks all know they're going away sooner or later. They all know that eventually they're going to go away. Maybe not now, but in 20 years. So they're trying to do something. Uh, yeah, I think they'll be all right. I mean, network TV, I maybe. think you're right because there is still something about the middle of the country still likes to sit down at 8 o'clock with commercials and everything and just watch their Travis shows. Travis still watches movies on cable. Like TBS? Like, he'll see a movie's on on the cable guide, and he'll be like, oh, let me stop and watch this. It's a yeah. nice surprise. No, but I mean, like, do you, do you do that with, like, if it's on, like, TBS or something like that? Uh, it depends on the movie. Because that's something I can never, but if I, I can never just zone out. Oh, on TV, on TV, no, I can't either. My girlfriend does that all the time. She's Crazy. like, I'm watching Roadhouse on TNT. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you wait? I think, I mean, the TV's got apps on it that you can watch anything you ever wanted with no commercials. Right. Yeah, the commercials are a little annoying. Access at least keeps the language in, though. Like when they start yeah. taking the language out, I forget, I was watching Running Man on Access, or ASS, whatever it's called. Oh, oh. And it's oh, like, yeah, right, as long as the language is there and, and they're, not, they're not butchered, I can just fucking fast forward like, to the commercials. That's mainly music stuff, right? Or no? Access? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they had some lot, great music documentaries. A lot documentaries. of concerts yeah. and like concerts and stuff. Yeah, they show. Yeah. Was Luis J. Gomez crying on Legion of Skanks recently? Did I see that on YouTube? Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah. Why? Was it real? Yeah, because he rewatched Milo and Otis and it yeah. got to him What's again. What's Milo and Otis? It's that it's a movie about a cat and a dog that take care of each other to get somewhere. I've yeah. never watched it. He seemed like he was intoxicated and then he started talking about it and then he, he may started have been a little drunk also. Then he started crying but for real. Yeah, he was absolutely crying for he shared this moment with his son. It was a movie that made him cry when he was a kid and then he watched it with his son and had a tender moment. After we were talking about like you know hooker pussy or something, that's why it was it was placed weird. Yeah. Milo and Otis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, there's a fun facts we found out though about this. It's a Japanese movie, I think originally. There's no oh, like, there's no, because there's no people in it. There's no dialogue. Yeah. yeah. So and, they, oh, they just dub it over. But apparently, the big thing about it was why we looked into it at all was many. Many dogs and cats died in the making of this movie. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it was like nonstop. There's just scenes where they had them floating down the river in a box, and I think they said at least eight cats were killed. Oh in my that scene. god! Every take, they just had to get a new cat. <laughs> throw in another. <laughs> throw in another Otis. <laughs> you go to craft services. That's what they're eating at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking half the cast. <laughs> so in there, like fresh. <laughs> yeah. Taking off the skin. It says, uh, in Australia, uh, the animal liberation. Queensland, their founder, uh, Jackie Kent, alleged the killing of more than 20 kittens during the production and added that she was disturbed by reports from Europe, which alleged the uh, the other animals had been injured uh, as blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on, but over 20 kittens. A yeah. producer broke a cat's paw to make it appear unsteady on its feet. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and this is Lewis's good, like, feel-good movie. It, well, it did make him sad. He'd probably like the bonus features. Probably. The deleted what was, scenes. What was the other, uh, did you ever see Cannibal Holocaust? No. That's a, uh, a band in America, they say, movie. It's, star- it's starring the guy yeah. who was the only guy who fucks Debbie and Debbie does Dallas. You remember the guy? Remember the shop owner? She um, worked. It's at that, not. Like, is it Harry? I'm gonna go some by the name. Is it Harry Reams or is it John Leslie or is it Randy West? No, nope, no. Harry. No. Uh, this guy only did a, a handful oh. of them. It's uh, if you look up the name of the guy, Mike uh, Ranger. Attell interviewed him on uh, Dave's old porn at one point. He looks like a, he's a creepy looking old guy now, but he's the guy who fucks Debbie Does Dallas. Who is that? Yeah, I'd love to know. 
Let's get his name. It's amazing what a big porn that is, and it was just a, an average. I'll know the name as soon as I see it. Cast. It is Richard uh, Bala. Richard Bala, yeah. That's what I was just. Oh, I was saying Arbola. Is I think also him? No, or no? Is a different guy. Nope, different guy. So he's all. he's in Cannibal Holocaust. They sort of Eli Roth remade it as the Green, the Green Inferno, the Green Inferno, but nowhere near what this movie did. But apparently, in this movie, they had to go to like court to prove they weren't murdering actual. It looks it's so grisly and looks like real tribal people. Even the Green Inferno, like it's kind of unbelievable that movie got made now. Yeah, you know, it did go pretty far, but even nowhere near as far no, as it looked like they were in, really killing people. In this one, they actually uh, they do kill several animals. They like rip the shell off of a tortoise, and they kill like a. They show them like actually killing a monkey, and there's just many scenes where it looks like I don't know how they would have possibly, especially this time. They rip the shell off a tortoise. Yeah, I must have hated that. It's the worst. Pretty gross. The worst. By the way, Travis, what did you say in my ear? There's something with our communication. I can't hear you. Just say it on you the air. Three minutes. Oh, Just three minutes. Okay, I thought you said one minute. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen this, but I will watch it. Oh, is that the turtle? Yeah. And what, what else could it be? What a stupid question. No, it's not. Is oh, that no, the not, turtle? That's, that's a regular picture. No, they actually take the top <laughs> of the show off. Oh, I think that's Well, it's alive? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they do some fucked up shit in the movie for sure. There's a lot. Yeah, they show them like uh, it's it's like I said it was banned in America for yeah. you could always find it online, but it's uh. I think you can get it on DVD. It's now. It's worth a peek. Do you remember blood sucking freaks? No, I never saw. Yeah, that, that. was uh, Trauma put that out. They did. Oh, is that Trauma? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Ronnie the Dwarf or whatever the blood sucking freaks. That was like this big band movie, and you watch it like yeah, it's a little cheesy. They, if you're gonna do the banned in America thing, it better be pretty grisly. Especially like, Ser online Ser now. Serbian film should be banned. <laughs> I mean, it's something to watch, but that should be banned. Serbian film? It's a movie called a Serbian film. I When I sit on the road, like, it's so funny how I have to watch cartoons at night to go to sleep. Like, not like, like, you know, like the Bob's Burgers family guy type shit. Do you? To fall asleep in a hotel because I'm very uncomfortable and downright almost like scared in hotels at night still. It's weird. Why? 40 years old. I don't know. I just, I'm uneasy. Like, I usually leave a, like, the desk light on. I put the TV on ESPN on mute just to have sports happening in the background. And I sure. usually watch a car. But not at all the sign of someone who was raped as a boy. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Are you scared of the dark? Um, Are you a scared of the no, dark? No, I just like, I'm a per like, I, I don't just go to sleep in the dark. So if, it's just like if I sit there, I'm almost worried about my own thoughts. <laughs> like just sitting there and thinking myself to sleep would be awful. So I'd rather kind of zone into something. And I just said, yeah, I think hotels are just weirdly uncomfortable and like unsettling Big for some reason.